Okay. Here we are. Here we are. This My is life. the post Christmas New uh, Year's. Yeah. Happy 2023, everybody. Happy 2023 is right. Can you feeling pretty good about 2023? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I would be in, a little fairness, bit skeptical about your faith <laughs> if you said you weren't. I would in be fairness, wondering. In fairness, I feel pretty good about every year. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, the life on Earth is not, you know, it's not, yeah, it's not safe. Like, no one's going to get out of here alive. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's... so you know, there's always going to be challenges. Mm -hmm. So, so when I say that, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, I feel very... I feel good about 2023 and mm -hmm. I know that every year the you know, the doomsday guys come out and you know mm -hmm. they're a lot of those guys are friends of mine so I you know I, I like them but you know I I don't I don't live in that camp very much yeah totally but I I do feel not a doomsday thing but I feel like there's a real you know shift of the tectonic plates mm -hmm. happening and of course we prophesied that on Sunday and on Monday there was no, on Monday night or Tuesday, there was mm -hmm. an earthquake here, and I specifically said I'm not prophesying earthquakes, you know, yeah, in the funny. natural, but definitely had had two since then. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we don't want earthquakes in the natural, but there is a big shift happening, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's a lot of things people were asking is, mm -hmm. you know, um, kind of what you're feeling for this year. Like, what is the Lord showing you about His bride mm -hmm. this year? which is kind of what you've been sharing for the last couple of weeks. There's a big shift, you know, uh, mm -hmm. it's coming like this is a, this has been an ongoing four year prophetic word that I had mm -hmm. right before COVID, like uh, COVID started. I mean, our recollection of COVID started in January and in December, the previous year, you know, I prophesied that there was, that God has actually taken a hold of history and that he was, you know, we were moving from complete free will to sovereignty. Yeah. And, you know, that there would be some great, there'd be some huge shifts going on. I still, I still believe that that, you know, those prophetic words are, are gaining momentum. Yeah. And I believe that we're in a time of a few things, you know, like, I'll, I'll say the negative thing first. Yeah. You know, that prophetic word I had in that, that December, I think that was, uh, this is 22, so it must have been 2019. Yeah. Um, you know, it was predicated on, a, in, you know, in powerful dream that I had about the, um, you know, the um, iniquity of, this, of the Assyrians was complete and the Lord was... Mm. Uh, the verse I got in a, in the dream was about um, it'd be better for you uh, to have a millstone put around your neck and thrown in the sea than to cause a little one to stumble. And it was mm -hmm. about it was about the transgendering of children. Hmm. And so I feel like that's causing a revolution. Hmm. Like I believe the Lord is inspiring, you know, a revival, a, re a reformation hmm. that's really rooted in. A revolution, you know, yeah. I, and I'm not in any way prophesying violence or something like that, but there is mm -hmm. a, the violent take it by force in the spirit. Yeah. And, you know, on then Sunday, two, three, two Sundays ago, uh, not last Sunday, Bill spoke, the no, last Sunday, Gabe spoke, okay. two, three Sundays ago, mm -hmm. two weeks ago, three Sundays ago, you know, I prophesied about the lion being unleashed. Yeah. And and that was uh, and that I pro I gave you know I shared eight scriptures about earthquakes that mm -hmm. God was shifting the tectonic plates the heavens yeah. and the earth were shifting and several of them talked about that the foundations of the heavens and earth yeah were shaken yeah and so I feel like we're in a a, a time of shaking where uh, you know the fear of the Lord and the 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 purity. Uh, 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 and holiness of the Lord is really being revealed, mm. and I do believe that you know culture is is going to shift in, on in in response to that. To mm. that. That's good. That's <laughs> really really good. Yeah. Be careful what I say and not say, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I like this person because you said there there's been so much shift, and mm -hmm. I, this person's asked, "Do you step into a new season?" as a conscious effort or does the Lord just shift the seasons in his timing? Like, does he shift it and you have to take the effort to step into it or is it just boom, it shifts? 
Well, I, I think it's both, right? I mm-hmm. think we can cooperate with what the Lord's doing. And I think in different times, and I would call them like epochs, E-P-O-C-H. Yeah. Like, I think that what I prophesied in 2019 is that history has been taken out of the hands of man, put in the hands of God. Mm-hmm. And in those cases, our, our response needs to be obedience, right? Mm-hmm. We obey. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, there is a huge uprising right now. In fact, we even called our new book Uprising uh, mm-hmm. out of this kind of prophetic sense that there is an uprising and the not just the people of God, but people in general are starting to rise up and say these things have to change yeah. like, and justice needs to come to victory and yeah. we need to protect, you know, we need to protect children Yeah. and um, we need to protect the unborn and we need to protect children from the craziness of uh, the insanity of culture right now. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, and, and you couldn't get people to respond seven years ago. Hmm. Like, we couldn't get the church to do anything. And now people are, you know, they're doing what we need to do. And that is, we need to get involved in in culture. Yeah. Like, the goal, there's a war. Now, how many times have we said this? There's a war over who will shape history. Yeah. I probably said that 20 times in, in these. There is yeah. a war. Yeah. In the spirit, I'm talking about in the spirit. Yeah. Over who will shape history. Yeah. And people are looking to the political world to lead in this epoch. And I'm like, mm, nope, that's not going to happen. Like they're going to follow but not lead. Mm-hmm. And I think that right now what's happening is we have the, we our political, and I'm making a general statement because yeah. there are definitely exceptions to this. And uh, one, my friend Bill Lee in, uh, in um, Tennessee is one of them. Mm-hmm. The governor, he's my friend, the governor. But... But, you know, as, as a general statement, basically politicians right now are, are checking the wind and deciding what they what to say. Hmm. And, you know, what we need and what we're what's happening is we're, we're in a John the Baptist moment. Yeah. Where John is making the crooked places straight and the rough places smooth. And he yeah. is he may be preaching in the wilderness where there isn't any big names. Uh-huh. But we are in a season where where the Lord himself is shaping culture like a potter shapes Mm -hmm. clay on a wheel that's really good and so our our again the humility is the way forward and we need to find uh we need to find ourselves you know if you know at the feet of jesus so to speak right in a place of humility and definitely not resisting the things the lord's doing and also partnering with them that's good. Someone asked, how do you partner with what the Lord is doing this year? I think you, I mean, you spoke to that a little bit. Yeah. Humility is a way to partner with him. Do you have other ideas of how well, we can partner with what I, he's doing? I think year? we have to stand up for righteousness, mm. you know, and there is a, there is a, there is another gospel being preached right now. I've mm-hmm. not ever said this. It just came to me in a few minutes ago, but there is another Jesus. Paul said, there's another Jesus hmm. and that Jesus is not Jesus Christ. Hmm. And there is a there is a kind of a new age love where Jesus is being redefined as hmm. accepting uh, any lifestyle, mm-hmm. and it's it's not true. Yeah, it's not true, and yeah. and that's you know it's not true. And there is a hell, there is a heaven. Mm-hmm. God doesn't send people to hell. People go to hell. He says over my dead body, but people step over it. Mm-hmm. He's done everything to make heaven possible for us. Right. Not even by our works. Even. You don't yeah. like not even by your works. So it's like you don't even have to be like you're like I'm not talented. I'm not smart. I'm not pretty. I'm not. It's like mm-hmm. not you're not even getting there by your works. So it's right. Uh, it's it is by your choice though. Yeah. It is by your will. Yeah. Uh, but you know, there's another Jesus being sold. That is, you know, it's the it's the circus Jesus. It's the, mm. you know, there's no hell. There's, you know, Jesus, mm. Jesus. Uh, you know, there is there is. You, you can live however you want and yeah. and I think, be a Christian. Yeah. That's just not true. And yeah. it's costing our children right now. Like that's my my biggest thing is really, and you know this because you know me, but my yeah. passion for children. Yeah. Like the, like the the insanity of our culture mm-hmm. that allows not allows that that is solving trying to solve the suicide rate of teens by transgendering their bodies and somehow thinking that that's a solution. Yeah, I'm talking about children. Now, adults do what adults do. Mm-hmm. You know, a consenting adult. Yeah. wants to you know tattoo their face or cut both their arms off i mean right i'm sad for them and they need the lord but 
I mean, that's their free will. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the Bible, Jesus especially, is really clear that children are protected by angels. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and heaven, uh, heaven protects children in a way that, um, that, that really society should too. That's beautiful. Gosh, this is a little heavy. I no, really, it's really beautiful. That. I was thinking today, actually, I was like thinking about how my generation has for some reason decided that rules are a bad thing. Like anybody telling you yeah. that you should do something or should live a certain way, you should, you know, do this for your life or you shouldn't do this for your life is something that causes a lot of like rebellion rebellion yeah. inside. Yeah. And I was thinking about it today and I was like, you know, I think, I mean, we talk about this all the yeah. time, but going back to, well, a good father, a good parent actually sets boundaries for their kids. And we see that in the beginning of time, like the Lord created boundaries before he even created human beings, right? He yeah. put the stars in the sky. He created, he created the morning and the night all for a purpose. And there were boundaries around a day. There were boundaries around space. There were boundaries. Yeah. And then we were born into that. And for some reason, all of a sudden we've decided that given a tree not to eat. Yeah. Like we were given weight. We were given rules, not yeah. necessarily guidelines. We were really given rules mm -hmm. and deciding that it's not something to live by anymore. You know, that rules are bad when in fact, you know, like the Lord, yeah, he's so gracious. He's so kind. He's all these beautiful things, but he also really has given us rules. Well, rebellion is in vogue right now. Yeah. I mean, you see videos all the time on, you know, I'm on social media, on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and t Twitter. And, you know, there, uh, there was a video I saw. It's, I've seen it many times with different people. Whatever the government tells me to do, that's what I'm not doing. Yeah. It's and just... I'm like, okay, well, mm -hmm. the government tells you, you know, not to run that red light. The, governor, the government tells you, mm -hmm. you know, not to eat that rotten meat, you know. Mm -hmm. it, or, it just goes on and on. So, okay. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a reaction to the COVID season, pain. partly, yeah. you know. There's obviously pain there. Sure. Totally. Okay, I'm going to steer the conversation in a little bit. Oh, good. Let's direction. do that. I like <laughs> we can go down a deep getting, path. Getting deeper. Oh, my word. Oh, well, hello, 2023, yeah. everybody. <laughs> um, so somebody's asked, how do I get born in the fire if it feels like I was born in the smoke? You recently quoted that. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah, it wasn't my quote too. When, when we put it up, we didn't find who quoted that. But uh -huh. I think it's because on Sunday when I said, if, if, you know, if I was born in fire or smoke, we'll never do. Mm -hmm. But I didn't share who quote, who the quote yeah. was for. So I'm sorry. First of all, I'll say, I think it was maybe yeah, Leonard Ravenhill. Yes, I think exactly. it was. exactly. It was like Leonard. That something. wasn't my quote. But that was a, it's a beautiful quote. And it, it basically saying that when you're born in a, you know, as a radical believer, yeah. N nothing else is going to satisfy you. Yeah. And you know, you get you get wealthy, you get powerful, you get comfortable, but you live with this intensity that you it's hard to explain. But I I'll just say, okay, I, I got saved. You know, people would know my salvation story because I've told it so many times. But I, I definitely got saved in you know in the Jesus movement out of. A crazy culture, a mm -hmm. crazy house, and I thank God my mom's watching from heaven right now. Mm -hmm. And I love my mom; she was so beautiful. But I was raised in this crazy home, and you know, and didn't have a great upbringing. But when I received Christ, I was a radical. As a radical, I mean, we didn't do Santa Claus, we didn't do Easter, we didn't do Halloween. You know, I, I just say those things not as good or bad, but like that's where we were. Like we were just mm -hmm. radicals, right? Mm -hmm. And we wouldn't even wrap our gifts in Santa Claus paper, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, you, you know, just to give you like, this is how we were, we were like radicals and, and, and this was, this was the movement I was born into, mm -hmm. like millions of people were born into this yeah. Jesus movement, you know, and we just came out of such craziness. Mm -hmm. And once you, once you've experienced that, the radical side of the kingdom like that, where you yeah. just live by faith and you trust God for everything, then, you know, then later on you get money, you get some notoriety, you know, you, you get, you know, some power and all of that. And it's like, you can do that without this, yeah. but it's never satisfying. Mm -hmm. right. It's never satisfying. Like you're, you're like, I, I like the fact that I can pay my bills on time and right. that I can give and that I can do stuff with money. Cause money, money, money is, 
it's, it's not, I'd rather live with money than without it if I have yeah. those are the choices. But I can't live without passion. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I would say that to anyone who's, you know, asking about that, it's like you hang around other passionate people and you get, you know, you can't help but yeah. either get in or out, right? Like right. passionate people don't necessarily draw you in. Mm -hmm. They might repel you, mm -hmm. but they do make you make a decision. And uh, in Bethel, you know, we're, we're just surrounded by crazy people. We're surrounded <laughs> by, way. yeah, uh -huh. I'm saying, yeah, I'm sorry, in the best way. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, we have students, uh, 1,600 students on campus and on 800 fire. people on, on, online, yeah. you know, students online who are just radicals. Yeah. They're just crazy for Jesus. Yeah. And, you know, you get around those people and it's like you either flow with them or you feel convicted about it. You 100%. Know? So yeah. that's what I meant by that, that's that quote. Really that's what Ravenhill meant too, I'm sure. Yeah, really powerful. Okay, we might end with this, this oh, last gosh. question. I know, we're just already Sheesh. close to time. Um, what are you expecting for the prophetic conference this year? Which is next month, right? Yeah. The prophetic conference. Man, that conference is going to be off the hook this year. <laughs> Why like, is that? Because like... <laughs> you're speaking at it? <laughs> well, I would hope that that would help. I would help, but... Yeah, that that wouldn't make it off the hook, but uh, there's just so much prophetic momentum building for this year. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like some kind of climax, cl climax, climactic, climactic. Uh -huh. That's a good way. To, that was the way to say it. It's like <laughs> I was trying to figure out what to put on the end of climax. Clim, yeah. Climactic. You know, it's like <laughs> like the snowball is growing, right? And you know. We didn't invite any guest speakers this year That's right. to our prophetic conference, which yeah. I don't think we've done that in 25 years I've been here. Really? I, I don't think we have. If we have, I don't. I earnestly don't yeah, remember because totally. it's normal it's for us norm. to have one to two. Yeah. But we just felt like there was so much going on in our own space. Mm -hmm. And when, when the prophets that I was in a room with were talking about the prophetic conference, they were like, I just feel like we're supposed to do this one ourselves. And so I would would have been against that because I always like to have an outside voice. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, I just feel like we're carrying so much kind of Holy Spirit energy mm. for this year that we should probably keep it in-house as yeah. far as our speaking. So it's going to be exciting. I, I, it's always exciting. Prophetic conference is always off the yeah. But it's gonna, there's going to be encounters. And, you know, we've been really praying for the Lord to bring encounters and I, I know the Lord told me that I was to be unleashed so yeah. even Sunday mornings you know I'm just getting down off the stage during the, the, the preaching time and just ministering to people and just mm. like let's get back to the old gym and and let's let's commission people and yeah it's gonna be off the hook I mm -hmm. can feel it just talking about it it's gonna be crazy gonna be so good yeah amazing well how about you pray for those watching yeah lord i yeah and i, I just want to say my intensity today is probably greater than i had anticipated so i i, no, I don't good. apologize for the intensity but for anyone who kind of felt hopeless over it i feel like this is going to be a great year yeah it's a year of, of hope totally uh, lord i just i pray for that uh fire that we that raven hill prophesied yeah um, we pray for that fire of, um, of, of revival. Yeah. We pray for the sense of climatic kind of Holy Spirit movement. Mm -hmm. We pray for that John the Baptist making crooked places straight yeah. in both our lives and our neighborhoods and our nations. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we thank you for the sweet love that you have for each of us. And, the way you guide us and lead us. And we just pray for the peace of God yeah. that surpasses understanding, that guards people's hearts and minds. And pray for people that have just come out of the Christmas season. That was a tough season for them. Family mm -hmm. members lost, and even the Johnson family who lost mm -hmm. Benny a few yeah. months ago, tough Christmas. Mm -hmm. And there's so many thousands of people who follow us that are in similar situations. We pray for peace and mm -hmm. grace, that this would be the year where you know, morning endures through night, but joy yeah. comes in the morning. And we pray for there to be a, now a shift in in that season for morning mm -hmm. to joy. And we bless all these people who follow us and who love us, God. And we pray that we would be a blessing to them. Yeah.
Thank you so much for following us. And um, yeah, we're gonna we're on next week. We're too, on so next week. We're back. We'll, tr the whole we'll new try year. not to be as intense next week. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys then. God bless you.